On November the 1st, 1755, the city of Lisbon, Portugal, which was Europe's fourth largest city at the time, was almost entirely destroyed by a natural disaster, the likes of which had never been experienced by any European city previously. This event, this event effectively ended the Portuguese empire as the nation was enjoying the wealth of its colonies and becoming one of the most influential global powers of the age. It not only changed Portugal as a global power, but it had enormous influence on other countries, science and theology, and the concept of giving international aid. In this section, we'll explore what happened, why it happened, why it was so devastating, the social and religious changes, and the advent of scientific studies into the cause of earthquakes. So at approximately uh, 9.40 to 9.50 a.m. on the morning of the 1st of November, which is All Saints Day, uh, this day is one of the holiest days for the Portuguese people. And as a result, most of the population were in churches celebrating mass. It was during this time that an earthquake struck. The quake itself was estimated to be between 8.5 to 9.0 magnitude. Uh, when the quake struck, the churches became death traps for the worshippers, as most of the buildings collapsed immediately, killing or injuring thousands. The city of Lisbon itself, along with many other places in the country, saw most of the infrastructure collapse or become damaged. Giant cracks appeared in the city almost five meters wide. The quake itself lasted for around five minutes. Uh, this, however, was only the start of the devastation as the survivors of the quake were faced with an even more deadly event. The quake on November the 1st generated three tsunamis. And the tsunamis that were generated were estimated to be between 6 to 20 meters high. And these completely engulfed the downtown area of Lisbon, killing thousands of the stunned survivors who had only just escaped the buildings. Due to the celebration of All Saints Day, candles had been placed around the city and the tsunamis knocked these candles over. This caused the final blow to the city, a massive, uncontrollable city fire that burnt for hours and further added to the death toll and destruction. Uh, the research into the quake indicates that it began in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, deep under the water where the tectonic plates of many continents meet. Um, it's a hotspot for seismic activity, although it must be noted Compared to other oceans, the Atlantic is relatively quiet in terms of earthquakes, but at this particular time, the tectonic plate slipped and this created the disaster. Along with Portugal, many other countries and areas felt the impact, even as far away as South America. Um, the earthquake was devastating for several reasons. At the time, the population of Lisbon was around 200,000 people, and the final death count was between 30,000 to 60,000 people, and approximately 70 to 80% of the buildings were destroyed. This makes it one of the deadliest earthquakes of all time. Within hours, the Portuguese empire had been economically crippled, something it never really recovered from. Before the quake, uh, Portugal had been enjoying a golden age of advancement and economical growth, with money coming in from its many lucrative colonies like Brazil. Uh, Lisbon itself and the harbour were extremely important to trade, with most of the overseas money arriving through this harbour. After November the 1st, the economy was crippled, and this meant that approximately 50% of the GDP was lost in costs. Culturally unique buildings and churches were destroyed, along with artworks, writings, and books. Warehouses along the harbor were also destroyed, and this meant losing valuable cargo like diamonds. Uh, the social and religious changes post this quake were huge. 
Uh, many people saw the disaster as having a religious component. Uh, people in the heavily Catholic Portugal saw the quake as divine retribution, and the Protestant countries of Europe also saw it as punishment for continued use of outdated Catholic practices and idolatry, especially the destruction of the Catholic churches, which were seen as symbols of this. Europe at the time was in the midst of the Enlightenment. Uh, the Enlightenment is a, a philosophical rethinking of freedom, uh, religious separation of church and state, etc. these kind of things. And this disaster caused many to debate the theological question of why evil was allowed to exist on earth. Uh, the writer and philosopher Voltaire also wrote a poem on the disaster. Politically, the man to address this disaster and lead the city on a new path was the future uh, first Marquis of Pombal. Uh, he was a diplomat and chief advisor to the king at the time. Uh, before the quake, he was fairly unpopular with the ruling aristocracy, but he immediately implemented disaster reforms and a general rethinking of architecture and city design. He assembled a team of military engineers, and with these military engineers, he designed grid-like systems to replace the previous winding streets that had organically grown in the city prior to this quake. He also created protective structured structures called the Pombalina cages. Uh, this is a type of wooden cage that can withstand small earthquakes. Uh, as well as the cages, he also implemented fire breaks in between the houses. Uh, so successful was his design that much of modern day Lisbon is a product of this city building. As a byproduct, sewers, garbage collection and transport were vastly improved. The quake did have some positive repercussions, and these took the form of scientific studies into the cause of earthquakes. This earthquake was the first to be studied scientifically, and this later led to the formation of seismology. The Marquis of Pombal sent questionnaires to various parishes around Portugal to try to collect data about what exactly had happened and when it happened. This data allows scientists today to examine the cause and impact from a scientific point of view. 